Hello and welcome guys to week 5 of our lecture for uh, living in the IT era. For unit 5, we will discuss about humans and computers. The essential questions are the following. How do humans communicate with computers? And what is the impact, in, impact of computers on everyday life? For intended learning outcomes, we should be able to identify how people connect with technologies and networks. So how humans communicate with computers. When we say computer software, it is a combination of instructions, data, and programs that the computer needs in order to do a specific task. It is also known as computer programs. They are a set of codes or instructions designed or written by computer programmers using a specific programming language. So that particular programming language can be high level or low level programming language. Most common types of programming language used by programmers is called object oriented programming, which is considered as a high level programming language. This includes C sharp, Java, and open source programming language, PHP. History. Improvements in software developments are the result of improvements in computer hardware. At each stage in hardware's history, the task of computer programming changed dramatically. So we first start off with the analytical engine. So in 1837, Charles Babbage developed or attempted to build the analytical engine inspired by Jacquard's loom, okay, which is used to weave textile or weave a cloth. So that is a loom. That is a manual means of interconnecting fabric together. So through that, Charles Babbage attempted to build the analytical engine. The names of the components of the calculating device were borrowed from the textile industry. In the textile industry, yarn was brought from the store to be milled. The device had a store, which was memory to hold 1,000 numbers of 50 decimals digit, decimal digits each. Numbers from the store were transferred to the mill for processing. So basically, Charles Babbage attempt, attempted to create a computer that would somehow mimic the process of the textile industry. So in his device, he has a store, which is the memory or storage, and the mill, which is the actual processing unit or the CPU. It was programmed using two sets of perforated cards or punch cards. One set directed the operation and the other set inputted the variables. However, after more than 17,000 pounds of the British government's money, the thousands of cogwheels and gears never fully work together. So the analytical engine was or did not come into fruition or did not come into reality because it was never completed. Ada Lovelace worked for Charles Babbage as seen in the picture. So the first picture is a picture of Charles Babbage and the second picture is a picture of Ada Lovelace. Lovelace. So Ada work for Charles to create a description of the analytical engine in 1843. The description contained note G, which completely detailed a method for calculating Bernoulli numbers using the analytical engine. This note is recognized by some historians as the world's first computer program. So this is considered, the note G is considered as the world's first computer program. And Ada Lovelace is considered as the world's first computer programmer. Universal Turing Machine. 
So in 1936, Alan Turing, as pictured here, when he was 16 years old, introduced the universal Turing machine, a theoretical device that can model every computation that can be performed on a Turing complete computing machine. It is a finite state machine that has an infinitely long read drive tape. The machine can move the tape back and forth, changing its contents as it performs an algorithm. The machine starts in the initial state, goes through a sequence of steps, and halves when it encounters the half state. So this is sample of or a diagram of what's happening in a Turing machine. Okay. So as you notice, there is a symbol, and then the input, and we have the tape here, and as well as the output. Relay-based computers. The Z3, invented by Konrad Zuse in 1941, Zuse, was a digital and programmable computer. Zuse became aware of the Babbage engine in 1939 while attempting to file a German patent. The analytical engine was based then, which was easy to comprehend, or decimal base. Zuse recognized that a binary machine was easy to construct. Telephone relays are two position switches, open or close. The C3 have had approximately 2,600 relays, 1,800 for memory, 600 for arithmetic, 200 for the punch tape reader, keyboard, and display. The circuits provided a floating point nine instruction computer. Programming the Z3 was through a specially designed keyboard and punch tape. Manual input was through a calculator style keyboard that accepted decimal numbers. The machine converted the input to binary and passed them to a series of calculating modules. The result was converted back to decimal and displayed in an output panel. Simultaneously developed was its successor, the Z4. An air raid in April 6, 1945, destroyed the Z3. In 1950, the Z4 was placed into production at the Federal Technical Institute in Zurich. The hardboard Mark I, invented by IBM in 1944, also was a digital and programmable computer. It supported 23 signed integer digits and had seven major units. So this is a picture of Carl Zuse, and this is a picture of the Z. If I'm not mistaken, this could either be the Z3 or the Z4 because the Z3 was already uh, destroyed in 1945. So the picture you see here is a person trying to replace a bad tube in the Enya. So as you notice, the Enya has 19,000 vacuum tubes. So imagine if you want to replace a bad tube, you need to check all the 19,000 existing bulb tube. The ENIAC or Electronic Numerical Integrate, Integrator and Computer was built between 1943 of July and the fall of 1945. It was a Turing complete general purpose computer using 17,468 vacuum tubes to create the circuits. At its core, it was a series of Pascaline, Pas, Pascaline's wired together. Its 40 units weighed 30 tons, occupied 1,800 square feet, and consumed $650 per hour in 1940s currency in electricity when idle. It had 20 base 10 accumulators. Programming the ENIAC took up to two months. Three function tables were on wheels and needed to be rolled to fix function panels. Function tables were connected to function panels using heavy block cables. Each function table and 728 rotating knobs. Programming the ENIAC also involved setting some 40,000 switches. Debugging a program took a week. It ran from 1947 until 1955 at the Aberdeen Probing Ground, calculating hydrogen pump parameters, predicting weather patterns, and producing firing tables to aim their artillery guns. 
computers. Instead of logging in cords and turning switches, a stored program computer loads its instruction into memory just like it loads its data into memory. As a result, a computer could be programmed quickly and perform calculations at very fast speed. Rasper Eckert and John Mochley built the ENYA. The two engineers introduced a sort of program concept in a three-page memo dated February 1944. Later, in September of that same year, Dr. John von Neumann began working on the ENYAC project. On June 13, 1945, von Neumann published the first draft of a report on the EDVAC, which equated the structures of a computer with the structures of the human brain. The design became known as the von Neumann architecture. The architecture was simultaneously deployed in the constructions of the EDVAC and EDSLAC computers in 1949. In 1961, the Borogs B5000 was built specifically to be programmed in the Alcohol 60 language. It featured circuits to ease the compiled pace. In 1964, the IBM System 360 was a line of six computers, each having the same instruction set architecture. The Model 30 was the smallest and least expensive. Customers could upgrade and retain the same application software. Model 75 was the most premium. Each System 360 model featured multi-programming, having multiple processes in memory at once. When one process was writing for input or output, another could compute. IBM planned for each model to be programmed using the PL1. A committee was formed that included COBOL, Fortran, and Algol programmers. The purpose was to develop a language that was comprehensive, easy to use, extendable, and would replace COBOL and Fortran. The result was a large and complex language that took a long time to compile. Computers manufactured until the 70s had front panel switches for manual programming. The computer program was written on paper for reference. An instructor was represented, an instruction was represented by a configuration of on and of settings. After setting the configuration, an execute button was pressed. This process was then repeated. Programs were automatically inputted by a paper tip or punch card. After the medium was loaded, the starting address was set via switches, and the execute button was pressed. So this is an example of a store program computers, the Nova 3. So notice it uses switches. And then we also have start stop. Okay, and then if I'm not mistaken, I think the punch card may have been inserted somewhere. So this is how they look like. Store programs computer. Very large scale integration or VLSI. A major milestone in software development was the invention of the VLSI circuit in 1964 following World War II. Two basic technology was replaced with point contact transistors in 1947 and bipolar junction transistors in, 19, in the late 1950s, mounted on a circuit board. During the 60s, the aerospace industry replaced a circuit board with an integrated circuit or IC chip. Robert Noyce, a co-founder of Fairchild Semiconductor and Intel, achieved a technological uh, improvement to refine the production of field effect transistors. The goal is to alter the electrical resistivity and conductivity of a semiconductor junction. First, naturally occurring silicate minerals are converted into polysilicon rods using the Siemens process. The, the Chorralsky process then converts the rods into a monocrystalline silicon bowl crystal. The crystal is then thinly sliced to form a wafer substrate. The planar process of photolithography when in, in, then integrates unipolar transistors, capacitors, and resistors into the wafer to build a matrix of metal oxide, semiconductor, or MOS transistor. It is the primary component in IC chips. Originally, IC chips had their function set during manufacturing. During the 1960s, controlling the electrical flow, migrating to programming a matrix of read-only memory or ROM. The matrix assembled a two-dimensional array of uses. The process to, em to embed instructions onto the matrix was to burn out the unneeded connections. There were so many connections, firmware programmers wrote a computer program on another chip to oversee the burning. 
The technology became known as programmable ROM. In 1971, Intel installed the computer program onto the machine or into the chip and named it the Intel 4004 or 4004 microprocessor. The terms microprocessor and CPU are now used interchangeably. However, CPUs predate microprocessor. Example, the IBM System 360 and the CPU made from circuit boards containing discrete components on ceramic substrates. So take note of that. The term microprocessor actually came later than CPU because before microprocessor came into mind, CPUs were already existent or were already existing. So this is an example of a BLSI. So what happens here is it, this is a, a photograph of the processor, which has its top sliced off. So you can see the contents inside. The SAC state, 888. The Intel 4, double 4, or 4004 was a 4 bit microprocessor function to run the Busicom calculator. Five months after, Intel released the Intel 888 an 8-bit microprocessor. Bill Pence led a team at Sacramento State to build the first microcomputer using the Intel 8008 in 1972. Its purpose was to store patient medical records. The computer supported a disk operating system to run a Memorex 3 3 MB hard disk drive. It had a color display and keyboard that was packaged in a single console. The disk operating system was programmed using IBM's basic assembly language. The medical records application was functioned or was programmed using basic interpreter. However, the computer was an evolutionary dead end because it was extremely expensive. Also, it was built at a public university laboratory for a specific pur uh, purpose. Nonetheless, the project contributed to the de development of the Intel 8080 or 8080 in 1974 instruction set. The X86 series. In 1978, the modern software development environment began when Intel upgraded the Intel 8080 or 8080 to the Intel 8086. Intel simplified the 8086 to manufacture the cheaper Intel 8088. IBM embraced the Intel 8088 when they entered the PC market in 1981. As consumer demand for PCs increased, so did Intel's microprocessor development. The succession of development is known as the X86 series. The X86 assembly language is a family of backward compatible machine instructions created in earlier microprocessors were retained throughout microprocessor upgrades. This enabled consumer to purchase new computers without having to purchase new application softwares. Programming environment. VLSI circuits enable the programming environment to advance from a computer terminal until the late uh, until the 1990s to a GUI computer. Computer terminals limited programming programmers to a single shell running in a command line environment. In the 70s, full screen source code and editing became possible through a text-based user interface. Regardless of the technology available, the goal is to program in a programming language. Types of computer software, we have the system software or OS, is the most important software running on the computer since it manages the computer's memory and instruction, and it has the ability to control all the connected hardware and installed software applications. Next, our application software. As most of the day-to-day -day tasks in front of a computer involves the use of application software or programs. So how do we interact with operating system? We can interact with the operating system using either a CLI or a GUI. So CLI was the earliest form of interaction before the advent of the mouse in which the computer responds according to the text command that is typed. In GUI or graphical user interface, pictures and buttons through mouse clicks and keyboard and clicks. 
what are the different what are system platforms they host the application software installed in the system so this is a brief uh, history of various operating systems first we have the unix it was written in assembly language ken thompson wrote it based on pcvl based on his experience in the multix project b was replaced by c and unix rewritten in c developed into a large complex family of interrelated os which has been influential in every modern os the Unix-like family is a diverse group of OS with several major subcategories, including System B, BSD, and Linux. The term Unix is a trademark of the open, open group which licenses it for use with any OS that has been shown to conform to their definitions. Unix-like is commonly used to refer to the large set of OS which resembles the original Linux. Unlike our Unix-like systems run on a wide variety of computer architecture, there is heavily for servers in business as well as workstations in academic and engineering environments. Free Unix variants such as Linux and VSD are popular in this area. So we have here a sample screenshot of the Unix CLI. So this is under Solaris 10. BST and its descendants. A subgroup of the Unix family is the Berkeley Software Distribution Family, or BSD, which includes free, net, and open BSD. These OS are most commonly found on web servers, although they can also function as PC OS. The internet owes much of its existence to BSD as many of the protocols now used by computers to connect, send, and receive data over a network were widely implemented and refined in BSD. The World Wide Web was also first demonstrated a number of computers running an OS based on BSD called Next Step. In 1974, University of California, Berkeley installed its first unit, Unix system. Over time, Students and staff in the computer science department began adding new programs to make things easier, such as text editors. When Berkeley received new VAX computers in 1979, with Unix installed, the school's undergraduates modified Unix even more in order to take advantage of the computer's hardware possibilities. The Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency of the U.S. Department of Defense took interest, decided to fund the project. Many schools, corporations, and government organizations took notice and started to use this version of Unix instead of the official one distributed by AT&T. Steve Jobs, upon leaving Apple in 1985, formed Next Incorporated, a company that manufactured high and computers running on a variation of BSD called Next Step. One of these computers was used by uh, Ber Tim Berners-Lee at the first as the first web server to create the World Wide Web. The first server for the World Wide Web ran on Next Step based on BSD. Developers like Keith Bostick encouraged the project to replace any free source code that originated with Bell Labs. Once this was done, however, AT&T sued. After two years of the dispute, the USD project spawned a number of free derivatives such as Net3 and OpenBSD. So this is a sample of a free BSD GUI. Next, Mac OS. Or OS 10 is a line of open core graphical OS developed, marketed, and sold by Apple Incorporated. The latest of which is preloaded on all currently shipping Macintosh computers. Mac OS is a successor to the original classic Mac OS, which has been Apple's primary OS since 1984. Like its predecessor, Mac OS is a Unix OS built on a technology that have been developed at next through the second half of the 80s and up until Apple's purchased the company in 1987. 
The OS was first released in 1999 as Mac OS Server 1.0, followed in March 2001 by a client version Mac OS 10, version 10, a Cheetah. Since then, six more distinct client and server editions of Mac OS have been released until the two merge in Mac OS 10. 10.7 called Lion. Prior to merging with Mac OS, the server edition called Mac OS Server was architecturally identical to its desktop counterpart and usually ran on Apple's line of Macintosh server hardware. Mac OS Server included workgroup management, administrative software tools that provide simplified access to key network services, including a mail transfer agent, a Samba server, an LDAP server, a domain name server, and others. With Mac OS 10.7 Lion, all server aspect of Mac OS Server, Mac OS 10 Server has been integrated into the client and the product rebranded as OS 10. The server tools are now offered as an application. So this is a sample of a GUI of a Mac OS. Linux, a unique or unique like Operating system, first released in September 17, 1991 by Linus Torvalds. They have a mascot called Tox the Penguin. The Linux kernel originated in 1991 as a project of Torvalds while a uni student university, uh, while as a university student in Finland. He posted information about this project on a news group for computer students and programmers and received support and assistance from volunteers who succeeded in creating a complete and functional kernel. It is Unix-like, but was developed without any Unix code, unlike BSD and its variant. Because of its open license model, the Linux kernel code is available for study and modification, which resulted in its use on a wide range of computing machinery, from supercomputers to smartwatches. The Linux kernel is used in some popular distributions such as Red Hat, Debian, Ubuntu, Linux, Mint, and Google's, Google's Android, Chrome OS, and Chromium OS, which they use in their netbooks, which are small, portable, but less powered tablets or laptops. So this is a sample of the interface for Ubuntu. Windows. Windows is a family of proprietary OS designed by Microsoft and primarily, tar primarily targeted to Intel architecture-based computers. The latest version is Windows 11. In 2011, Windows 7 overtook XP as the most common version in use. Windows was first released in 1985 as an OS running on top of MS-DOS, which was the standard OS shipped on most Intel architecture PCs at the time. 1995, Windows 95 was released, which only used MS-DOS as, as a bootstrap. For backwards compatibility, Win9X could run real mode MS-DOS and 16-bit Windows 3X drivers. Windows ME released in 2000 was the last version of the Win9X family. Later versions have all been based on Windows NT kernel. Current client versions of Windows run on IA32, x86, 64 and ARM microprocessors. In addition, Titanium is still supported in older server version Windows Server 2008 R2. In the past, Windows NT supported additional architectures. So you have here the timeline or, of, or the history of Windows up until Windows 10. Okay. As you notice, the very first Windows was plain, so it uses less colors. So in 1985, as you notice, as the time progresses, so the interface became or became more colorful, okay, and more pleasing to the eyes. Application softwares consists of software and online application softwares. Application softwares consists of software packages and online application software. 
Software packages are simply multiple applications or code modules that work together to meet various goals and objectives, while online application software is introduced with the improved internet speed being made available to consumers. We have different types of uh, software. We have freeware, which is copyrighted software available at no cost for unlimited use. Shareware, whereas users are encouraged to share the limited version of the software to promote, promote larger distribution and sales. And public domain software, which is a software that has no legal, copyright, or editing restriction associated. It is free and open source. It can be publicly modified, distributed, and sold without restrictions. We also have the different types of shareware. We have adware, allows the developer to potentially make money from ads in the program, even if the users don't purchase the full software. We have demoware, provides a demo or trial of the application. A subset of demoware is crippleware, which keeps the shareware from performing vital functions unless the full version is purchased. Donationware is a fully functional and operational shareware application, but the donation is requested to support future development, or in some cases to support a charitable cause or nonprofit organization. Web hosting and web content management. People who have no IT background can now create their own blogs and websites through online tools. They do not need to learn programming languages, although some knowledge in programming will be an advantage to further customize the web layout. Samples are Wix and WordPress. So this is a sample of a Wix template, whereas this is an example of a dashboard of WordPress. Our computers impact everyday life. Computers help us through education, enhancing uh, teaching materials, internet access, use as reference tools, administrative work, and e-learning. It also helps us, us in banking, such as through the use of ATM, internet banking, and the likes. It also helps in the workforce because they are used to expedite production planning and control systems, supporting chain management and facilitating product design in the industrial sectors. Machines are now fully computer operated. Researchers use computers to gather and analyze data for hypothetical reference, while administrators use computers to manage the entire operations of a plant or factory. We also use it for electronic commerce, as you are all aware, we have uh, the sample Shopee, the Sada, Zalora, Airbnb, Amazon. For hospitals, they are used as patients' database of health records, treatment, and medical records. They are used for faster diagnosis of patient illnesses and to test administered in hospitals such as blood tests, brain tests, ECG, and the likes through the use of computers. So that is our lecture for week five. Thank you and good day.